with that ladies and gentlemen we are moving straight into our next keynote speaker here we have with us uh, a brand which launched their new identity on such a great scale during the most difficult times of 2020 the brain behind this most successful launch of the year is amongst us and it's my privilege to welcome miss kavita nair chief digital transformation and brand officer for vodafone idea limited her address will focus on creating a brand for the digital age. A very warm welcome to you, Ms. Nair. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you very much for having me here. And thank you for those kind words. We thank are absolutely much. delighted with your presence and looking forward to your session, ma'am. Oh, thank you. And I hope that uh, I can add some, uh, you know, uh, you know, thinking or, you know, uh, open up some, you know, thoughts, thought starters for the audience here. And thank you very much for listening in to me. Um, I think um, I will, uh, I do have a little bit of a presentation to um, uh, share because it just helps to tell the story better sometimes. Yes. I just did this. So we can see the presentation now on the screen as well. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so I think uh, when uh, Kathy and team uh, said that building a brand for the digital age, and I think they from, um, this whole brand conclave is about how do we really shape uh, brands during this new age. Uh, I, um, uh, I I was thinking about it, and actually the, the key here is that, and what I was thinking more about was, uh, if I just look back on my journey, means I had um, the privilege uh, to build uh, telecom brands four times over, uh, whether it is, you know, Max Touch, Orange, Hutch, Vodafone, and now we. And uh, even though uh, I have done this many times over, and I may have some, you know, uh, a Guinness Book of Records of, you know, run, uh, killing brands and then, you know, launching them in um, uh, New Avatar, which consumers love, uh, there is really. Uh, in this era, right, it is it is just not the logo and the brand name that has changed. And I think I was resonating with what Varun was saying before me that the consumers have changed, the marketing landscape has changed, uh, and that's really very very important for us um, as marketers, as um, people who look after brands, to think about. And uh, when we were planning to do this brand integration of these wonderful two brands, you know, Idea and Vodafone are these two admired brands that we had in our arsenal. And when we were trying to integrate it, we said that, of course, we should borrow from the legacy, but we must build for the future. We must have a new, you know, dynamic edge to this um, new brand. And uh, the whole part was that we should really think of how do we really uh, talk to the new age Indian and in this case it means I will call it uh, the digital Indian because I feel that digital has really given consumers smartphones have given uh, consumers a new purpose uh, they really believe Indians are a young country we are a young country we are very optimistic we are very ambitious and I feel that uh, this combination of smartphone technology data has really helped Indians to really unlock many possibilities to help them get ahead in life uh, and also find newer ways and newer business models to you know how to work together to make things happen and we were very very keen to tap into what I call you know the the Kalbali of this rising India so uh, we was actually built for the new age Indian uh, for this connected ecosystem uh, and we wanted we to be relevant not only today but for many many years to come uh, and this is for the customer we also thought that this is a great opportunity because we remember we sell air so you know uh, all our employees are our, our you know brand is what a brand does so they are the ones who are really helping deliver the experience of this brand uh, and so we wanted to really craft something which is also which will help us build a future fit organization for us um, and if I then look back as to what we really did, and uh, it is only three months old, uh, but we designed a digital first brand. Uh, this was before the lockdown when we designed this, um, and uh, we, we we did not launch just a brand identity, but you know, brand identity is what people every PC is, but with the the whole positioning around it. Um, 
but we created a uh, we didn't go through the normal books of uh, you know the marketing landscape which is which in my previous uh, uh, avatars that i have done this you would say how will be this logo how will it come in black and white how will it come in print outdoor and then of course whatever it is you will slap it on uh, tv we said that we have to create this uh, brand for the screens the large screen and the small screen and uh what i really love about this is the flexibility flexibility and the various possibilities not only as a design system but also it flexes across consumer and enterprise rural and urban socio economic classes old age youngsters everything right so if all of you have seen it means you will see that it doesn't you don't see it in one way it is quite unique means you can see it in different manners so you're not really Guide, guidelineized, you know, if you know what I mean, because you know, brand books, brand books, you don't really need to be guided, you know. Uh, you have a flexibility to build it for this new screen, the new kind of people who are really uh, consuming our brands. And I think it really reflects the throbbing of India. We would like to be a brand which is together for tomorrow, and that's uh, and that is uh, the purpose of the brand. And we would like to really help. Uh, our customers get ahead in uh, in in their lives, uh, so that we can all together build a better tomorrow. Um, uh, so, and when we launched this, and um, Kathy, I think mentioned that um, it was done during lockdown. So to that extent, it is a it is a true testimony of teams really working virtually to do a brand launch of this scale and magnitude. Um, and it was all about saying that how do we really deal with crisis? Do we look at it as glass half full or glass half empty? And uh, we decided that it has to be the glass half full. Um, there are a lot of learnings that uh, you know I have from uh, what we really attempted to do. And brand is only you know means we, if this brand is just born, it will be you know shaped in the future. And we, you know brands are journeys and they will be built. But you know from just this aspect of when we shaped and crafted this brand. And what we learned from it, I thought that I will share a few nuggets of, uh, of what the learnings were because the results are very exciting, right? So all our stakeholders, whether it is the consumers who used to love Vodafone and Idea, they said that B is bigger and better. And they, you know, in the first, we had awareness of about 80% in the first week itself. And more than awareness, we had people who said that they really love it or like our brand to employees, to trade partners, it, it really resonated with them. And if it really resonates, um, I thought that we, I must, it, it's a great opportunity to reflect on certain learnings that I have, which I would love to share with you. Um, Yeah, so my learnings on building a digital first brand. So you know, the, this the journey is messy, and you know, pun intended, um, <laughs> because it is not a linear journey. You know, it never was. Um, you must have heard about the Google's messy middle, but if I just reflect back on ten years ago, means I I used to do this kind of marketing job about 10 years ago and I came back to do a marketing job 10 years later and I realized that I was the queen of 360 because you know uh, it was the path to purchase was fairly uh, lean, linear to that extent in the morning you woke up you read a newspaper you went to work you either heard radio or you saw something outside uh, your cars or trains or buses wherever you're traveling you came back in the evening and you watched TV uh, which was prime time TV, and suddenly when I really came back to uh, doing a marketing job, uh, the screens, the the small screen had changed the way consumers look at uh, you know brands and how they consume, and the path to purchase is no more linear, and uh, it is not something that you can really even control, and uh, the importance of data and analytics, you know, and the opportunity to really uh, use that. To really better navigate it and i think that is what uh, i think we crafted for we said that we will challenge the status quo we will not really use the tried and tested methods we have to understand that this journey to that extent is messy and how do we really participate in this consumer journey uh, which will really help us so that was the first learning uh, the second learning uh, is so important that you know uh, we no longer as you know brand 
beautiful built brands. Uh, it is not as easy as sending something to the consumer and they lap it. It is consumers who build it. Uh, so rather than trying to control, uh, we said that we must figure out how we can influence those who build it. And I'm not talking about just the influencer world, right? Because that is a that's another topic, and we can talk about that. But it is about the ecosystem and the connected is ecosystem, and how do we really uh, use that, and how do we really influence that? And it started with a small germ of an idea. These were some strategic, you know, pillars. We said we have. Vodafone idea did this massive integration, whether it was network integration, distribution integration, people integration, uh, and now brand integration through a lot of partners. So it was in the collaborative spirit. So we said we must use our partners to really, you know, uh, participate in the conversation of really, you know, uh, partnering with we. Uh, and what started with that germ of an idea really, you know, uh, I, if I can just say spiraled, spiraled where we had um, people organically participating in this conversation and becoming our ambassadors and advocates uh, to uh, really you know champion uh, this new brand so to that extent um, uh, we as market you have to give up control right because we had to really say that we have people who can really do this and uh, it worked for us uh, and i think that th there is a nugget there uh, as a principle that you know it is consumers who are building it and how can you really influence that how can you really participate there in an engaging manner and how can you continue to do that uh, to build uh, brands in this new age uh, world the third principle i think um, is that we have to engage with them on their terms, you know, uh, it, it, on their turf. It can't be that we do these, you know, these uh, means that I'm really, uh, I'm not saying that these are, but call them for an event, etc., and then expect them to participate and be engaged. I think that part has gone and the attention spans are much smaller. And we said that there is a, so, and for me, uh, there is a beauty of a triage that I call marketing data and technology i think they are coming together and the power of it is just so immense these three pillars i, I heard varun talking about it uh, and i i really i i love it when you know uh, you have uh, industry people who are talking in the same manner because it is great uh, so i think marketing data and technology how does that really come together where we can really create personalization at scale and we also can really leverage you know, technology to create immersive experiences. Um, and I'll just give you a couple of th thoughts on that, where um, I, I talked about our employees. We have about, you know, um, uh, about uh, uh, 11,000 odd employees. We engaged with them in a very, very immersive experience when we launched the brand, rather than just saying this is our logo, this is what it is. It was about if, if we really believe brand is what a brand does, we wanted the leadership team to really talk about how they believed in it, and then really uh, in get them to immerse in those experiences of the new brand along with their family. Because remember, we this was all during lockdown, and that really really helped. And we said, whatever our consumer sees, uh, you know, beta test it on our employees, and you know, uh, they could be our first set of consumers who will tell us whether this is working or not. Uh, so if you, you you look you see here, which is you know, you can make your unique V tune. You have a number and the the tune is unique to you so which is what i was telling you the personalization at scale right so you can really use your number to really create a tune which is your work yours and which is also branded and you would still like to make it so of uh, the power of technology or these wonderful trails that i showed you from the identity and i said it's not just the identity it just weaves in everywhere they became an expression of our network and this we said that how do we really use that to give immersive experiences, which people are really happy to engage with, they're happy to share because this is this is about them and not just be intruding on their lives. Really, you know, a lot. Um, we had about two million, you know, odd people who uh, did all of this, and we got some really wonderful brand advocates, people who did this. We filter because it was something that they they would they wanted to participate. It was not us just throwing stuff or pushing stuff in their face uh, which is why i'm not talking about the roadblock because that's a little bit of a traditional method that we used uh, to uh, really get some awareness going fairly quickly um and getting their attention is tough you know make it worth their while um 
about uh, 10 years ago you would say an average consumer is exposed to about you know 100 uh, 500 brands a day uh, but today somebody told me that an average consumer is exposed to about 2000 brands in a day and remembers only four or five and it is not when i say remembers not just remembers from a love perspective it could even be that i don't like this you know remembers only four or five brands that he or she's exposed to and all of us would like to be a part of that four or five isn't it because you know who would want to be in a place where people don't really remember them uh, and we said that we have to really do this in a manner where um, for people whose attention span is so low who want engaging stuff how do we really engage with them so if you look at it, I'm talking about a national scale launch of a telecom brand. And I'm talking a lot about how we really use digital and how do we really use digital to really build immersive experiences, engaging experiences. So some of you must have seen Happy Surprises, where we said that we must have some positivity and joy during uh, you know, the first few days of launch. And of course, there could be gratifications. But even if you people are spotting our logo, a simple idea uh, on the app and we expected about 400,000 customers who would play we had about greater than 2 million unique customers who played it for 14 days which was quite awesome uh, and suddenly you say that oh it was the simplicity of the idea it grabbed their attention they felt like you know and it was not just about the spot the logo it was a new app which they really liked so it is no more now about different different functions, silos, uh, which you have to really start integrating because it is just not about, you know, sending them a communication piece. And then, of course, more than ever, uh, I think I, I, if I didn't mention before, uh, when I came back 10 years you know, uh, later into marketing, uh, there are many things that have changed, but there are a few things that haven't. And I feel that creativity and storytelling still matter and they will continue to matter. They will continue to matter no matter how. They will always matter uh, till, you know, I think it is, uh, it is one of the things that has stayed uh, through centuries and I think it will continue to stay. It is just that how we tell these stories has changed, isn't it? Uh, and uh, if you look at it, all of us are naturally building stories for the small screen. And I'm going to just show you two ads, and they're different, and it, but it, they're still we. And uh, uh, but it is all built for uh, uh, built for the small screen. Uh, done it, done in like two three days. Uh, done with collaborators, partners who really come together to do this. Um, so the way you tell them has changed. But you know the essential part of interesting storytelling continues to matter. Happy surprises that I was talking about, and uh, the same brand, but in a different manner, where you were getting, you know, weekend rollover, but again, told in a very interesting way. Uh, for this new age. Yeah. And if you can see that, you know, Sonics come together, right? Because, you know, suddenly you realize that Sonics plays a large role. Uh, in the way um, uh, consumers process because they are using the small screen so they're seeing it in that manner they may hear that there is a payment posted etc so all of these become immersive experiences across at, uh, so that you can really engage with the brand at a subliminal level still know that this is a brand that is talking to you not in your face and i think sorry <laughs> And most of all, I think I started by saying that it is a brand uh, which is built for which is together for tomorrow. And we said that digital is changing the way brands are being built, of course, but it is also changing people's lives. Right. And I said that Indians are really, really optimistic. They want to get ahead in life. And uh, so this uh, and this flexes. So you, you have seen some of the digital work, some of the work that is there, which is of the identity which looks absolutely new age, cutting edge. And then you have these stories which are rooted in reality, which is also of the same brand. And I'm going to show you these three films, uh, which shows the power of what um, the digital can do to people's lives and how we are really act trying to actively participate in that. 
ना कि भगाओ फिर आ जाते ये आज के जनरेशन सारा दिन फोन टिक 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 क्या होगा इनका भगवान जाने You can create any website, any app, the way. देखो अब कौन बिजी है फोन पे दीदी हम चाहिए So I think these were some of the principles that I thought I must share with you that we learned as a team uh, on when we were trying to shape a new brand. And it, this brand was built for the new age Indian, as I said, from identity positioning to how it is really coming to life. Um, so these were about the six principles, uh, which I thought uh, I must share with all of you uh, what has gone. And uh, <laughs> This is just of course the beginning and I said brand is what a brand does. Um, this new brand is about three months old. So there is a lot more doing that is to be done. Um, thank you very much for listening to me and hearing me. Thank you. Thank you so much Lana, for sharing some wonderful insights with us. We do have a couple of audience questions that come in for you. So we're going to take a few minutes for you to uh, answer them. So first, foremost, uh, the question came in, coming from the audience said, why rename it V? Is there any specific reason behind it or just because of the Vodafone idea collaboration? No, so I think it borrows from the legacy, right? So it is a abbreviation of these two wonderful brands, Vodafone and idea. So it is, uh, uh, you know, VI, which is V. Uh, but it is much more than that. It is, and which is why I said it is V. It is uh, not just about me. It is about all of us. All of you know, it is about the collective. It is about the collaboration. Um, mm -hmm. It is about what this whole inclusivity of what this brand is all about. So, uh, and if you look at uh, stuff which is the logo, which has you know the uh, the eye, which has a dot below, it is an exclamation. It is a surprise when you deal with us. So, um, it is much more than just an abbreviation. But yes, it starts from fact that we comes from a legacy which borrows from the legacy of two really wonderful brands right it's a new dynamic edge <laughs> so here is another question uh, which is saying that the communication so far uh, consists of a film that we've seen couple of uh, advertisement or audio visuals what else will you plan to do to communicate this change? Now, we know it's in the nascent phase, but what are the plans? Yeah, so actually, I didn't share with you what happened during launch, and I think the films were just a small part of it. Um, I think uh, the large part was about, uh, so the first week, of course, was about getting the name changed done, and we, as I said, that we had awareness of about 80 percent and about you know i think day after recall of about 80 percent awareness across even uh town classes as low as you know our 50, uh, 50 000 pop, pop strata um, mm -hmm. and we really combined the power of tv and digital uh, to really build this and post which um uh, the substantiators as if i can call uh, you know a lot of it was rooted on our network and we really named the network GigaNet. Um, so I've not really shown all of that. I was assuming that the marketing representative must have got bored of seeing these things. <laughs> what we did, but uh, you know, the the GigaNet work, which really then you know um, uh, makes a uh, 
be uh, to build credibility of our network because network integration is what Vodafone Idea was all about, the back, you know, the backbone of it. And how does it really help you get ahead? And then, of course, uh, the IPL sponsorship and all of the digital, you know, immersive experiences that I showed. So it is much beyond a film, actually. You know, for me, which is why I said marketing, data, and technology. You know, all right. of this to come together. And for me, it is about content which you create and which then can go to a big screen or a small screen. But those are the screens that really uh, are uh, top of mind for us. Uh, based on the principles, I suppose. Right. Now, here is a big question, which says then. This network integration was clearly in the making for two years. Was it always the plan plan to launch it in September 2020? Or did you speed up the process because it made sense to launch it during the pandemic with the increased reliance on telecom players? OK, so that's a good question. So now, you know, you can't really uh, do launches like this, like overnight, suddenly saying, OK, pandemic, ho gaya, you should do it. Uh, so strategically, the decision always was that we must launch the new brand after the network integration is done, or almost near completion, right? Uh, yeah. Because how will you see the value of a new brand? Uh, how will you see a changed experience if you don't really? have our networks integrated. Now, the key is that the pandemic started in March. We launched in September. And you're right about it, that with the pandemic, um, the telecom brands, all of us, uh, you know, came back into the consideration set of consumers because we were helping people stay connected with what mattered to them. But that was actually not the reason for launching it. It's actually complicated because, you know, to launch brands at scale, uh, if somebody and I and for people who know me uh, will know that impossible doesn't really you know uh, exist in my dictionary. But if somebody told me about nine months ago or ten months ago that you would have to launch a new brand um, in this kind of a scale without uh, meeting each other all virtually, I would have said near impossible. But actually, we made it happen. <laughs> Because the teams had not met each other, so it did not. We didn't bring it forward or anything. It was the the strategic choice was that we will have to do it. Um, you know, uh, post the network integration and just married, and then you know we just launched the brand. It just happened that we had to launch it in the middle of pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, Miss Nair, for spending this time with us, sharing your insights and story of V as a new brand to for all of us. And uh, Exchange for Media, thanks you for your time. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're most welcome, Kathy and Dean. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, audience, for listening to me. And have a good weekend or rest of the week. Thank you.